So then, a little under a week ago, I made a weekend trip to Thorpe Park Fright Nights and decided to encapsulate staying in the hotel, which meant that I could go in the parks for two days and go in the mazes, obviously, for two days instead of one. And throughout this trip, I thought before leaving, you know what, this is going to be the first trip that I'm going to actually remember to video stuff because I usually go to a park with the intention of getting footage and even videoing parts from it and then completely forgetting and then getting in the car going to leave and remembering I thought I was going to film today, I've captured nothing. Which, surprise, surprise, for this entire weekend trip, I kind of did the same. Now, I did capture small amounts, and what I'm gonna do in a second is cut to the bits that I did capture while at the event, the talking pieces of bits I filmed when going out of mazes, because my intention was, after going through mazes all the time, I seem to leave the maze and then have a very different opinion to what I do a few days later reflecting on what I thought of those attractions. And I don't know if other people have this, I think all it is is throughout the days I think about what happened in the maze and reflect and see what I truly think about it, but I think it's a good thing to do to include the initial raw reaction from the mazes because I think it's good to show the contrast in them because it shows that opinions do change. Now, what I will do, I'll cut to it in a second, now I'll warn you this is going to be very choppy, there's going to be awful bits of transitions in it. I meant to record reactions for all the mazes and then completely forgot and then recorded a bit on the second day and then forgot to. Comically I said, ah, oh, you're either going to cut to footage throughout the park today or cut back to me doing a talking head segment at home. Surprise, surprise, it will cut back to this because I completely forgot again. But I'll cut to that now so you can see the initial reactions for the mazes and then I'll talk about what my opinion is of the event now that I'm reflecting on it a few days later. Yeah, right, we're about to go into survival games. As you can see, if Owen pans to the entrance. I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Just come out of survival games and that was nuts. They've that's changed a lot. The actors are a lot more hands-on and I think my heart rate is the highest it's ever been. But yeah, that was absolutely mental. I try that. I do agree they're too much hands-on, but as you can hear, Chainsaw Finale makes that, it's brilliant. So then, just come out of the last maze of the night for us, Stitches, and I have to say that again was another very impressive maze, although I will say actors weren't reaching our group very much, but I, we were too big of a group, I think, which was not the actors' fault. It was just so many of us, I think they struggled with it. However, theming in that was incredible. So many smell pods, that was brilliant. Lighting effects were incredible. There's stuff which I think Thought Park needs to continue with, because that was phenomenal. In fact, I think it's the best scare maze at the event for actual theming. I know you could say intensity goes to survival games, debatably, because it's more just you get shoved, which makes it so intense. But that is a maze which I would definitely recommend trying, because that was brilliant, and it exceeded expectations. Even though people were saying it was great, it was still even better than I expected, so uh, very impressed. So then, day two here, I didn't even mention this yesterday, I should say, I thought on the way down here yesterday it would be a good idea to actually film my reactions to the mazes straight after coming out, because I truly have found out this year that my opinion when I come out of a maze and then when I've had time to think about it does change a bit, so I thought I'll try and actually get some video footage together while I'm here. I am I'm very aware that yesterday I didn't get nearly enough, but I just sought to like merge it together so I can actually at least give what I think after I've done things. Things that I didn't document that I did yesterday was we did get in the Crows, which was actually very good, better than any other year has been here, very impressive. And we also got in, um, well, we, we did all the mazes, but we didn't go in Death's Doors. We didn't get to see the shows for Lucifer's Lair. So um, I'll hopefully get stuff of that today and I'll hopefully give you my reactions once I've done them. Also just realized now I've got back to the room that I completely forgot to mention we are doing the mazes again today. So then, there is the footage that I captured while at the event, which I know is very choppy and is not the greatest. It's my apologies for that if that sounds choppy. Next year, I think I need to get tattooed on my arm, remember to film footage while at the parks so that I look at it and remind myself, because I always forget the second I get in the park and remember when I get home. So I need to improve on that. That is one thing which I need to work on with this channel, actually remembering to video while I'm at these parks. So then, now I'm just gonna go through the event, say what my opinion is on things, and yeah, say what I think of the event overall this year compared to other years we've had the event. So then, first off, I'm gonna go on to scare zones. 
So first up is Death's Doors. Now this was my first time ever going through this attraction, so I had to put this first because I haven't had any previous years to compare it to because when it has been here in previous years, I've just not remembered to do it. It's my fault completely. I remembered to do it this year and it was really good actually. Really good fun scare zone. I wouldn't say it was the most intense, but it was a good laugh. I'd love to see that return in future years. As well as that, we had right outside of Death's Doors, Lucifer's Lair, which I have to say, was one of the things which when it was released on the website, I was really confused by it for some reason. I was like, well, I don't know what it is because it said something like scare attraction slash um, entertainment zone or something along those lines and it confused me. It was exactly what it said it was. It's a scare zone, it's got roaming actors outside of Ghost Train and there's a stage set up and everything. And also while that's going on, there's live entertainment with bands playing and then a fire show and several shows throughout the evening, which means that that area is really the busiest, I guess, in terms of things going on, in that I loved it there, I'll be honest. It might just be because it's been my first time attending the event since actually turning 18 and being able to have a few beers and sit down and chat with my family, because that was something which I loved this year. I did go with my family, which was just even better because it meant that we could have some really, it was really good fun. But yeah, this area, everybody in my family and people I spoke to while we were at the event all agreed it is really good. It's a really good pastime and it was phenomenal and it is something which I really, really would like to see return next year because it was brilliant in my opinion and the fire show on top of the dance shows were brilliant. So can't compliment that enough. As well as that, we had the return of the Crows of Morkin Meadow. And in my opinion, this was the best year for the Crows I have ever seen. And I really do believe that the Crows are just getting better year on year. This year obviously saw the first indoor segment of this scare zone. The actors felt like they were more than ever. It was really well themed and I think for a scare zone, it's practically a maze with the detail we're getting, so I cannot compliment that area enough, and I was so impressed with what I saw in there. Absolutely phenomenal with the crows. Now onto mazes, which I'll start off with trailers because I've not got the most positive things to say about it, unfortunately. I usually have quite a sentimental spot for trailers. Trailers was the maze that on my first ever year of attending Fright Nights, because Fright Nights isn't the event I've attended the longest for Halloween, but the year that I first ever went to Fright Nights, trailers was the new maze on park. I always kind of had a little bit of sentimental value for trailers, but I have to say I would not be sad to see it go. Unfortunately, now in reflection, we've had three years of a maze which hasn't really changed whatsoever. And I think it's showing quite a lot. The run throughs that I had this year were very, very shoddy, if I'm being honest. We were put in groups so large that the actors weren't managing to scare everyone in the group, which isn't the actor's fault. It is just there is too many people in the groups for the actors to even be able to try and scare because there's just so many people. It is the largest groups I've ever been in for trailers. It felt like they were pushing groups as through as fast as they can just to get you through it. It didn't feel like it felt in previous years where it was more you could get lost in the story and you could really feel like you're venturing into the trailers and there were actors that weren't able to get into their rooms in time for some and that happened on both nights. Now this was one which I'm probably gonna be told that a lot of people had different run throughs and I'd love to know what you thought about this because I really don't like criticizing trailers. It's a maze which I have such a sentimental spot for, but I have to be honest and it wasn't the greatest this year. So as hard as it is to say, I would kind of like to see something new put there next year, but we'll see what happens on that front. It might come back next year improved. As well as that, we had the return of survival games this year, which on the first night I got footage of, which I said, oh, the actors are too hands-on. On the second night, which I typically yet again forgot to film, they weren't as hands-on, but I think that's just because it was just coincidence on the first night. More scare actors tended to grab me. Some scares will, some scares won't really. But yeah, the first night, I have to say it was very hands-on, which the issue was, I'd seen online people talking about they grab you quite a lot this year and they're a bit more hands-on and it kind of ruins it. They were, but it wasn't as bad as I'd heard, to be honest. They were grabbing you and shoving you, but it didn't remove too much from it. And in fact, on the second night, I've had the best run through in this maze that I ever have had. I do have to say, although they were right, they were very hands-on this year. I don't think it was too much. You're told what you're going into with survival games. You're gonna be grabbed and shoved and it's an intense maze. It's all of the above. So it is that maze which is meant to be intense. So can't really complain about survival games, I have to say. In hindsight, although I said, oh, they grab you too much in what I said at the park, it could have been a lot worse. It can't have been that bad if I still loved it that much. So. As well as that, we have the maze, which I think is the standout maze for Fright Nights and is the best maze that I've been in at Thorpe Park Fright Nights in years, and that is Stitches. Now, this maze is obviously new for this year, and it is phenomenal. Like, it is genuinely the best Fright Nights maze in terms of theming that I've ever done, in my opinion. It's so detailed, 
it's got a really decent length to it in that it doesn't feel rushed and it's not a very short maze by any regards. It's got amazing set design in it. There's smell pods which really do work with the attraction and really immerse you into it. The actors are in the perfect places and there's a perfect amount of actors to immerse you. And I was just blown away by this attraction. It reminded me of last year going to Halloween Horror Nights and going into their maze and thinking, wow, this is incredibly themed. Now I know you could say that that is a bit of a wild comparison because Halloween Horror Nights are hands on shoulder mazes and it's a very different thing because it's obviously Universal Studios compared to Thorpe Park. But in terms of the way that Universal will strive to theme it and make it a really themed experience, that's what Stitch had made me feel this year because it was really well themed and I was very immersed into it in every run through I had, which I cannot compliment enough. I am more than excited to see this attraction return in future years because I'll be honest, my expectations were quite high for this attraction before I went because I'd seen people talking about and saying how good it is and I thought, well, it better be good and I still am more impressed than I expected to be. So that is a maze which I'm so impressed with and I'd love to know what other people think of this maze because I was blown away every run through in it and was always spotting new things, so brilliant in terms of stitches. One of the best mazes I've been in at Thorpe Park so far, if not the best, because it was very much up there. As well as that, something which returned this year which I was initially a bit sort of skeptical about is Amity High and Lycanthorpe returning with different characters this year, obviously for the dance show. That was phenomenal again. I should have mentioned that in the um, scare zone section, apologies for that. But it was brilliant again, if not better than ever. I really liked with the obviously the seating bit off the back, it was used as like a set piece for all the actors. Brilliant, absolutely loved that. I think that that needs to stay at the park for years to come because it works so well. So yeah, that was the best I've seen it in many, many years. Very impressed with that, cannot compliment it enough. I'm excited to see what happens in future years because the new characters for this zone are working brilliantly. Apologies if you've noticed a change in frame. The camera battery decided to die really near to the end of the recording, which is just my luck. So um, yeah, thank you for watching. I'd love to know what you think of the event this year. This may be going up typically after the event has finished on its final weekend. It wasn't intentional, I'm kind of bolting recording things but I've just realized while recording it that given that I've already got scheduled uploads for the next two weeks this will not be going live until it has unfortunately ended but I will still make this as a video because I think or even though the event's finished I really make these videos to know what people think about the event which is what I'd love to know so please do let me know what you thought of the event this year whether you agree with things I've said which I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people don't I tend to ramble and come up with some really weird opinions on some attractions so please do let me know what you thought of this event this year I'd love to hear it thank you for watching I'll see you in the next one goodbye